culture draws us to religion and what is needed if that part is to be rightly guided. Science and logic are not the only spheres in which our reason shows itself. We seek for the causes of things, but we also seek for their meaning. We have moral values, aesthetic tastes, yearnings and aspirations, which for want of a better word we call spiritual. Such things are not irrational, even if we find it difficult to provide a scientific foundation for them. Indeed, it is only a rational being who experiences the world in this way, in terms of meanings, values, tastes and aspirations, and who feels, as a result, the tension between his life and his ideals. There is nothing irrational in this. On the contrary, not to feel it is to be only half alive to the human condition. It is what I suspect Christopher Hitchens felt seeing the disasters which he encountered as a journalist. People who do not convey to us in whatever way an awareness of their shortcomings do not attract our sympathy. They are not really of our kind. And isn't it plausible to think that it is precisely this aspirational side of people that draws them to religion? As rational beings, we cannot be satisfied with causal explanations only. The question why has for us another meaning, not what is the cause, but what is the reason? For what end does this or that exist? Daw for Professor Dawkins, religion has nothing to say about what life is for, so he said to us. But uh, in fact, it's precisely religion which addresses the question what life is for, as opposed to what caused it. As rational beings, we look for meanings, connections, harmonies and symmetries. We want the world to make sense to us and to answer our questions, not merely in the sense, in the way the laws of nature answer the inquiries of a scientist, but in the way that the laws of harmony answer the aspirations of a musician. Our reason overreaches the bounds of science, and this is not a deficiency in our reason, but a deficiency in science. Moreover, as rational beings, we make an absolute distinction between right and wrong, good and evil, virtue and vice, and we found our lives on the belief that some things are intrinsically worthwhile and to be pursued for their own sake. Not pleasure only, but love, duty, virtue and kindness. We can't mount a deductive or scientific argument in favour of those values for all that uh, Professor Grayling says, but we condemn those who condemn them and believe that reason is on our side. All those facts about the human condition dispose us to look for the places where we can stand, as it were, at the window of our empirical world and gaze out towards the transcendental, the places from which light from that other sphere floods over us as it flooded over that little nun in the nunnery in, near Beirut. There is nothing irrational in looking for these places or in the thought that we find them by locating what is sacred, sacred words, sacred texts and sacred rituals. Now, I don't deny that there are wrong ways of pursuing this religious quest. Those for whom faith is a call to arms are obviously a threat to all of us. But although they make the most noise, they are not the most numerous among religious people. For most people, religion is what it has always been, a cultivation of piety, a humility in the face of creation, and an attempt to live according to a shared moral code. That is what reason demands, and it is only those who have a narrow and stultifying view of human reason who wish to reduce it like Plato to the abstract pursuit of philosophy, or to reduce it still further like Professor Dawkins to the more concrete pursuit of science, who would wish to banish religion from our ideal republic. It is only such people who are, in my view, the enemies of reason, who could imagine that this constant companion of our species which has been at our side through all our sorrows and all our joys, is somehow superfluous to our real requirements and can be kicked out of the city gates, along with all the art and poetry and music that makes no sense without it, and all the aspirations and ideals that it implants in the ordinary human soul.